Hey guys, today we are back with a continuation of the James Wilstrop and Joel Macon game from the CIB Black Ball Open. So what we're watching today is Joel Macon's movement again into that front left corner, except this time he's going to go with an open stance movement. So if you recall from the last video, he went in with a big lunge on that right leg going forward. So that's a close stance for a right-handed player on the backhand. In this video, Joel Macon is actually going to go open stance into that front left corner, meaning he's going to lunge with his left leg forward. And he's again under a tremendous amount of pressure. And let's see what he does. We can talk a bit about tactics. We're going to talk a little bit about his movement, the joint angles, the fitness, all of it. I'm going to freestyle this a little bit as we go and draw in some of the arrows as we go. First things first, I'm going to show you guys the clip. It's only two and a half seconds, I think in real speed and then we're gonna slow it down check it out here we go okay so that was it seems so simple <laughs> but let's break it down so will strop is getting ready over here to strike the ball and what we're gonna notice is as will strop's getting ready watch joel macon's feet Willstrop's getting close to hitting the ball. The ball's right here. Willstrop, I mean, we can break Willstrop's technique down in another video, but that's nice technique, nice joint angles, stepping into the ball, chest is facing the wall. But I'm not gonna break that down right now. I'm focusing on Macon's movement. If you guys want to see Willstrop's technique broken down, leave a comment below and I will do so. So as I was saying, Macon's feet are starting to come off the ground with that split step. You can see, hopefully we, we can all identify this by now, but where are his eyes? So let me break this down just a little bit quickly. Eyes are on the ball. He's always watching the ball because he needs to know what's happening, what shot Will Strop's gonna hit. And actually, all of the top players don't just watch the ball we end up developing our peripheral vision. So the idea is that you're seeing the ball, but then you're also picking up on cues based on your players, your opponent's racket face, their contact point, their body angle, the how tight or loose the ball is. So there's all of this subconscious processing going on in the background that then allows us to start anticipating what shot the opponent is going to hit. And then we can adjust our T position accordingly and all of that. Now, these aren't things that we're consciously thinking about, but they're things that are being processed subconsciously the entire time. So if we continue here, and there, now you see both of Macon's feet are actually in the air. Put another arrow there just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. We see both of his feet are in the air. That's his little split step. You see he's still got his eyes on the ball and Willstrop's racket is coming down to make contact because the timing of the split step is really critical. You want to be able to land right after the opponent has hit the ball so you can see which direction the ball is going in and then you can plant your feet accordingly and apply the appropriate power and then move off to kind of get that ball from there. So now Macon's there, Willstrop makes contact with the ball. You see Macon's feet strike the floor and then he realizes oh the ball's going to the front that right foot comes down because that right foot is what is going to propel him again from the ball of his feet in that direction now what you'll also notice is that most squash players we don't put our foot down straight as though you're you've got your foot in like a direct line and then you're pushing off most squash players put their foot at a slight angle so you're pushing from that outside ball part of the foot to then go in the direction that you're moving in. and you can see that over there he will plant you see that foot it's at a slight angle it's not directly pointed in the direction of his movement he's got his foot flat He's probably still more on the ball of his feet, uh, his foot, even though it might look like his foot's flat on the ground with his heel. And then he takes off and off he goes in a little sprint. And what you'll notice is that ball's quite low and it's tight. 
So what we'll see in a minute is, and this is just more of a technical thing, is again, you'll see Macon's racket path probably is gonna come somewhere in this direction. I haven't planned this out, so we'll see. Well, let me extend that arrow so we can see if, if I'm somewhat correct or not. And there, so he didn't take a massive, massive backswing and his racket path did continue through that sort of trajectory. You notice he, he had a little bit of a prep over there, but it's not a massive prep. You have to get the racket back just a little bit to be able to generate power through it. But now let's get into the movement and fitness side of things. So what do we have here? We have a few things going on. I hope you guys by now are starting to see some of the things and see some of the common factors in all of these videos. Number one, he's got that back foot drag that's bringing him in. Number two, he is extended and relatively bent over and flat with his back. Number three, he's got that joint angle where his knee is actually behind his heel. So again, that knee being behind the heel allows him to get out of that shot a little bit more effectively. If he, if his knee was over and going over his toes, which is okay, as long as we strengthen the knee joint and all of the surrounding muscles and tendons and ligaments effectively, we can handle that load, but it's not an optimal place to be because it can lead to injury and it's not an efficient place to be because it makes it difficult to then recoil and push out of it so you're then going to be drifting forward into that corner instead of getting out of that corner and that's how the strokes and all of those sorts of things can result so that requires strength and it requires the appropriate timing and it requires the appropriate mobility and flexibility and then the training just so you get used to putting that knee in that angle and you're not kind of going over the toes so that's all of the stuff that we talk about consistently and then let's see what he does here so we should pro presumably we're going to see his back foot drag in a little bit we're going to see him push out with his foot and his back all of it's going to come out while the back foot drags in and then he's going to scurry out of the way because whilst as you can see the ball's glued to the sidewall so he has to do his best to push it and kind of put a little lob down the wall and then get out of the way in case it's a little bit loose because Willstrop's gonna be hunting that volley. And even though we're not focused on Willstrop, I will point out one thing. If you notice, number one, Willstrop is in his split step right now, just as Macon is about to hit the ball. And number two, look at Willstrop's tee position. He's not on the tee. Now, why isn't he on the tee? Because he knows that he's hit a tight ball that's glued to the sidewall and Macon's chances of getting that ball over to the right side of the court are slim. So he has the, he's earned the right to cheat, cheat over a little bit to the left side because he's anticipating that shot. He's hedging his bets. He knows the percentages are in his favor that Macon is going to hit that ball down the left side wall so he can come over and cover that. So let's see how that unfolds. And now you see Macon's foot. We're watching Macon again, guys. Macon's foot is starting to drag in. And as that foot's dragging in, he is starting to generate that power from his foot through his back, pushing back out. And there it is. And you see he's putting, he dragged his foot in this way to stabilize himself because his movement right now because this ball is coming off a little bit is not going to come directly back to the tee this way because will strops in the way and you're gonna you're gonna get a stroke so he has to move to the right just a bit first you're gonna see he's gonna kind of move a little bit oops a little bit in this direction and then from there he's gonna make his way back to the tee because he can't just go directly back because of the stroke so there he's going out to the side there's that first movement laterally let me extend those arrows so we can continue to see them his first movement was laterally and then he comes back 
towards the T. And if you notice, where are his eyes? His eyes are always on the ball. The ball is in this direction. His eyes are on the ball. He's moving back to the T simultaneously. And there you go. He's on the T. And one thing to remember, folks, is that ideally, you want to be back on the tee by the time your opponent is about to hit the ball, whether that's off the bounce or the volley. That's the goal. If your opponent does not hit it on the volley, even if they let it go to the back wall, you can be back at the tee by the time the ball takes its first bounce, and then you can wait and then take your split step. Or the alternative movement that some people prefer is to just time their movement a little bit slower so that they're getting to the tee right when the opponent's going to be striking it so they can take their split step accordingly so that it's more of a continuous flow. And I mentioned that once before, but again, that's all personal preference. If you like that continuous flowy movement, then you're timing your movement based on the quality of your shot, how quickly your opponent gets the ball. If you want to be more certain or secure with your movement, you can aim to get there before your opponent volleys or by the first bounce your ball puts on uh, ball makes on the ground, you want to be back on the tee. So there you have it. Some more details around Joel Macon's open stance movement into that front left corner. We saw the, tr the, the things we see every time, right? Back foot drag, appropriate knee angle. He's basically in a deep lunge. So it's kind of like a single leg lunge or a split squat or even a squat. Those are kind of movements that will help you over here. That back angle is very similar to a deadlift. There's a lot of stuff going on with momentum and energy and really fluidity is kind of the key when you're doing this. And there are ways to train it and that's what that fitness program is all about that I'm creating. So again, I'm sharing a, a link in the comment. If you're interested, you can leave your contact information and as soon as the program is ready, I will be sure to share it with you. If you have any requests for specific videos, specific players, comparisons, anything like that, please leave a comment and I will do my best to get it out for you. All right, have a great day and I will see you in the next video.